there's six criteria that make up a high quality project-based learning experience. So are the kids striving for excellence and are they challenged intellectually? Is the work authentic? Is there a public product? Students should be working in collaboration either with other peers or experts in the field. That uh, there's opportunities for reflection uh, throughout the project. And finally, um, the students are learning and using a project management process. Classroom spaces have traditionally looked um, very much either you make it or you don't. And I think um, we really need to change the paradigm when we think of what a classroom should look like. It should really empower all learners to be successful and, and be just better people. I, for me, I think when really looking at a project-based classroom, I think the first thing is that is what's the learning? What's the learning going on? And creating that culture of learning so that when you're doing the project that uh, you have a culture of students seeking feedback, um, identifying where they're at uh, in the project and what do they need to achieve that learning goal, that learning outcome. You know, our school was, was typically a place where students were told they weren't very successful. I mean, they faced a lot of challenges outside the classroom and inside the classroom and, and it was a place they didn't want to come to school. And I think what happens is when you see kids go through this process over time, they start to put their faith more in, in what the teacher's asking them to do and they're willing to, to push themselves and take risks that, you, that they wouldn't otherwise. Um, being a school principal at a school that had a 34% graduation rate, um, zero, zero percent of our students attending college, we had a, a huge project to shift that um, coming in with our new staff. And so at the end of the game, we were able to really leverage project-based learning to come to a 98% graduation rate, 100% college acceptance rate over five years, and then have students persist through college at a 77% rate. And what project-based learning did in particular is it lets students have pride in their work. They present their work. It was a complete culture shift for our school as well. Not only did it shift classroom instruction, but entirely our, our school culture shifted. It was about them um, at the center of the learning at all times. There was a recent study in, uh, in Michigan with second graders in project-based learning, random control study, Halverson and Duke, that shows that um, through the projects, the students are increasing their content knowledge in social studies, as well as uh, their reading for understanding in the content areas. Um, and there's more growing evidence in multiple content areas about the effects of PBL. Teachers are very fearful, you know, um, we inflict so much stress on teachers and we also shame them that they're not doing enough. Um, so doing this work and going into classrooms and, and doing these trainings for teachers, they're like, they're eating it up. They, they want this because what we do is we create a community, we create a space for them to be a learner and we create a space that's this is what the classroom is actually going to look like. I think it's interesting when we do this training everywhere and talking with teachers and we do an ideal graduate process and every teacher says the same thing in terms of what they want from students in their learning and what they want that environment to look like and they're asking for those systems, they're asking for those conditions to be in place uh, and what we try and do is create that condition in that space to where teachers can talk about student learning and progression and how do we achieve student learning outcomes as well as this ideal graduate so that it's a both and. And so in learning how to do that structure and providing as many opportunities to have teachers to collaborate and share best practices and what's working uh, to achieve uh, successful student outcomes as well as uh, the ideal graduate. You would hope that, that they would recognize some of the best teaching practices that they already have in place but then also recognize that there is a need to get better at these things and that it can lead to greater success for students. And uh, In a short time, try one thing. What's that one thing that you, your one takeaway, your aha, that connection that you made as, a, as an educator and how is that going to impact your kid? I would move from a system that focuses on accountability to capacity building. It will be built on a sense of trust in teachers that they are there for the right reasons 
and that they are going to make a difference in kids' lives. Providing teachers more opportunity to share best practices in work uh, that's centered and rooted in, in student learning and moving it forward and, and making the work real for kids. Thinking or reconsidering how we um, test students um, and, and rethinking some of those policies so we can allow for some richer thinking, some richer curriculum um, and deeper learning. I think a, an ideal school would be a school where parents are not alienated. Um, I work in an urban setting and a lot of times um, our parents are made to feel like their voice doesn't belong or they're not welcome in, in the classroom. And, you know, for, for us, we've really worked on, you know, we need to honor the experiences of our students and that's honoring their parents as well and bringing them into the classroom and helping them imagine, you know, the opportunities for their students. One of my students in uh, downtown Oakland said, you know, what um, my traditional school, we did the three R's, remember, regurgitate, repeat. He says here at Envision Academy, we um, do a different type of three R's. It's uh, rigorous. And so when we think of rigor, he, he was thinking about the intellectual challenge that he's um, experiencing. Um, it's relevant. So they're finding authenticity through project-based learning, performance assessments, um, internships and workplace learning experiences that the audience is moves beyond the classroom and the teacher and the school. And there's a focus on relationships that all students are well known and supported and not only academically but emotionally um, and socially. And they feel like they have a sense of, of community. Um, and so my ideal school is rigorous and it's relevant and there are solid relationships.